Hello, and welcome to this video about how to use Oracle Content Management in conjunction with React.js to build a blog powered by Oracle Content Management as a headless CMS. My name is Preston So. I'm the Senior Director of Product Strategy for Oracle Content Management, and welcome to this latest video about how you can use React with Oracle Content Management as a headless content management system. Let's get started. The very first thing that we're going to want to do is to clone the repository that is already available on GitHub. This is the universal React blog sample that is already hooked up to Oracle Content Management and already has quite a bit set up for us um, already. So let's go ahead and clone this repository into our local development machine. Next, we'll change directories to go into this sample directory. Let's go ahead and install our dependencies. Wonderful. Now let's go ahead and open this in a code editor. You could be using something like Visual Studio Code um, or Atom or some other IDE to work with this code. Let's go ahead and open this code base in Atom. And one of the things that you'll notice right away is within our directory structure, we have our package.json file along with uh, several Webpack configuration files. But let's go ahead and take a look at one file in particular to begin, which is the .n file. It's generally considered a best practice when it comes to saving certain information about the Oracle Content Management Server uh, to use environment variables. Now, this is a public um, Oracle Content Management Server, so uh, this is already set up for us to run. Now, one of the things that's very important is that the channel token is what will be used by React in order to authenticate into our Oracle Content Management instance and access the content that lies inside the REST APIs that are available. One thing that's really important is to ensure that you configure your cross-origin resource sharing to avoid any distributed denial of service attacks, DDoS attacks that may occur. And this is considered a general best practice. It's also something that you don't want to leave in source control. So when you go ahead and use this sample as a headless project for your own purposes, you'll most likely want to take this out of your environment, out of your uh, source controlled repository as a general rule, unless you plan to use, of course, our publicly available instance for all of your data. Wonderful, so next let's go ahead and spin up a server, and then we'll take a look at some of the files inside and uh, go through what's available within this headless sample. First, let's go ahead and run a build. This is going to put together several bundles, both a server bundle and a client bundle that will make our universal React sample available on our uh, local machine. And if we go ahead and run npm run start, as you can see here, we've got a express server that is um, running on our port located at localhost 8080. So what we'll go ahead and do is let's pop over to our browser here and take a look at what's going on. As you can see here, our headless React blog sample contains a homepage that is um, generally considered a topic list. And this topic list contains several different kinds of topics here that are all being pulled from the Oracle Content Management instance that we've put together. If we click on one of these topics, we can see that within the topic, we've got a list of several blog posts that are available to take a look at. And if we navigate into one of these blog posts, as you can see, we've got all of the content that's currently being pulled from our Oracle Content Management instance. If we go back 
to the home page here, you can see all of this is taking place um, dynamically. This is all client-side routing driven. And of course, um, as we click on some of these uh, other blog posts here, we can also see that a lot of these, um, all of these uh, content items are coming directly from the Oracle Content Management instance. So let's go back into the code to take a quick look at what's going on inside the code base. So first and foremost, inside the SRC folder, which is our main source folder that contains all of our code that's going to be used within this uh, application, let's first take a look at the scripts folder and pull up server config utils. Now, Oracle Content Management makes available a content SDK for anyone who wants to build a headless application to use in conjunction with their specific um, application framework. In this case, we're using React. Now, one of the things that this file does is to create and instantiate, uh, excuse me, a, a new delivery client using this export statement to allow for us to access the Oracle content management content directly from our React application. So one of the things you can see here is that we're using our environment variables in the correct way, uh, using process.env to access those uh, values. And then you can see here that we're actually using the create delivery client method using this server configuration object to instantiate a new developer, uh, excuse me, a new delivery client for us to work with. One of the things you'll also notice is within the server, the services.js file, we've got a variety of different um, methods that we've set up that are directly related to and associated with the methods that are located within the delivery client in order for us to provide some key underlying utility functions for our application in React. So for example, this right here, uh, this get medium rendition URL, this get rendition URL method, both of these are uh, used in order to acquire images um, that we saw from our uh, live development environment to actually pull those images from Oracle Content Management and make those available to our, um, to our uh, uh, application in React. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is, as you can see here, these methods are based on the certain uh, content model items and content types that we have available within the schema of Oracle Content Management. And what we're doing here is getting all of the information that we need from the API and creating a generic method that we can now use to fetch each of these individual topics or each of these individual um, homepage content items or each of these individual um, uh, each, each of these articles, for example, from our Oracle Content Management instance. And this helps to uh, really alleviate some of the uh, kind of um, the uh, complexity that might be found when you actually access some of this data from within uh, React components. As you can see here, we've got a variety of other methods here, like each article itself. And um, our content SDK, our delivery client that's contained in the content SDK, is a really effective way to access a lot of these useful uh, methods that um, can be uh, packaged together in order to create a really nice query service. We've also got a small utility file here that um, creates a, a date function for us. And this is something, of course, that uh, might be useful for you as well. So next, let's take a look at the, um, let's take a look at the routes file here. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that this is the global router that is actually shared between the client and server implementations of this universal JavaScript application. One of the interesting things here is that the routing is driven entirely through dynamic uh, routing here. So React is, of course, creating this global router for us to um, basically create a dynamic way to access each of these articles and each of these topics. As you can see here, one of the things that uh, we've done here is just to provide our topic ID as saved in Oracle Content Management or our article ID as saved in Content Management as something that is available. But obviously, you can customize this router as you see fit in order to uh, create a different routing scheme or a different uh, set of names for the routes that you want to make available. 
So next, let's take a look at the uh, components that are involved here and the pages that are involved in this entire uh, React application. So what we've done here in this React sample is to split into uh, pages, which are representative of these routes, and components that fit nicely into each of these pages. So as you can see here, this is the home page here. We're looking at the topics list page which is the home page. And as you can see here, it's using all of the correct uh, React methods, includes, you know, including um, uh, extending a React component, using classes, um, and also fetching data through a mechanism that allows us to access our query service, rather than having to go through all of that within um, this React component itself. As you can see, uh, it's constructed in exactly the same way as many React components are, as most React components are canonically constructed today, which means that we have co-location of rendering um, here, where we have uh, all of the uh, JSX code and elements to uh, construct within the document object model available here, um, as well as, of course, the code to fetch this data, which directly invokes a method from the uh, original um, services that we put together. Now, if we look at the articles list page, which is one of those topic pages as you click in, we can see as well that it's taking the same approach and leveraging all of the kind of React goodness that we have, including, of course, um, ensuring that data is fetched during the component did mount lifecycle uh, method. And as you can see here, we're once again using one of those methods that we've constructed based on our content SDK and delivery client to uh, create a promise which returns the correct data, which is then, of course, rendered within the context of a JSX-driven um, uh, element here. And of course, each individual article detail page is going to uh, have the same thing happen. And uh, we'll just dwell very briefly on this here. But as you can see here, we're, we've also established, um, again, an invocation of our um, individual method here from within the delivery client that goes ahead and fetches the necessary data. And as you can see here, we're establishing some of the constants necessary to establish within the this.state object. And of course, the breadcrumbs, which is contained in a, in, in a second component over here. And of course, the full rendering of all of the data that we have retrieved from Oracle Content Management. Each of our individual components uh, match up with the components that are found um, within these pages. So these component files uh, match up with uh, what you see um, in pages rather than uh, representative of pages. So this article's list item, for example, is representative of a single article item within a list of articles, for example, on the topic page. We've also got the topics list item, which is representative of each of those topics that we saw on the home page. Wonderful. So now that we've taken a look at the code, let's revisit the actual uh, running server once again. As you can see here, uh, we've got our topics list, which is representative of the home page here. We've got each of our um, individual topics uh, listed here. If we navigate to one of these topics, we can see that we've got our breadcrumbs component. We've got our individual articles listed here in an article list. Um, so you can see how the components uh, compose into pages. And if we click into one of these blog posts, you can see that, once again, all of this information is coming directly from Oracle Content Management in the context of this React component. That's it. Uh, go ahead and uh, have fun building. Thank you for watching this video about Oracle Content Management and how you can use React in conjunction with Oracle Content Management as a headless content management system to build and implement a compelling React blog for your own headless content purposes.